Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials. Today is the fourth installment inside the Intermediate Java Programming Tutorial series. Today we are starting on Java Forms. These are going to be GUI forms that you can use inside of the different operating systems. So uh, I know a lot of you have been looking forward to this moment. So without further ado, let's move forward with this. As you can tell, I've already created two classes. One is called Form Practice, and one is called Practice Forms. I figured that'd be an easy naming convention, since this one is going to be the constructor, or basically the initializer for the form, and this one is going to contain the form itself. So, as you can see, both files have imported java.awt.asterisk, java.awt.event.asterisk, javax.swing.asterisk this one will contain all of your um it will contain all of the form components that way you can import buttons easily and jtex frames easily and our text fields rather and all that other happy stuff sliders radials all that stuff and then we have java.util.asterisk um, which we will use later down the line in the next tutorial or rather the tutorial after that to implement um, scanners and such. Then we have public class form practice extends JFrame. And the same thing with this extends JFrame. This is called inheritance. This is our first encounter with inheritance. Basically, what that does is it pulls the JFrame uh, class out of Java dot, or Java X dot swing, and it makes this file right here, this class that we're inside of. A child node of that the JFrame file, which allows us access to all of the f um, all of the methods inside the JFrame, and we are allowed to overload them, which means it basically just means we're taking whatever is inside the default JFrame methods, and we are altering them if we choose to make them more custom tailored to the exact program that we're working with. So this one is also an inherited class because we need the buttons and all that other happy stuff to work with. So moving forward, let's go ahead and fill out the main method. This is going to be a pretty short one. We're going to create an instance of the practice forms class. So practice forms f1 for form1 equals new practice. Actually, let's just take the time form1 equals new practice forms you need to capitalize that P and that should do that then form one dot pack basically this line right here is telling the program that it needs to pack every sign everything inside this instance of the form so all of the layout features and such that we'll be adding in a few minutes um, it is packaging everything for the, the actual operating system to read a little bit easier. Then we're going to have form one dot set location relative to null in parentheses. This is just saying that we're going to set the opening location of the form relative to absolutely nothing. Remember, null has no value. Um, it is a valueless uh, object, or rather, um, variable type, I guess, would be a good description of it. Um, it contains no value, therefore it will automatically just spawn the form wherever uh, it's usually the center of the screen, I believe, like dead center, if there's nothing to uh, relate it to. Anyways, form one dot set default close operation. This is going to di dictate what that little uh, red X button at the top right corner of the screen is. JFrame.exit underscore on underscore close. It's easier if you just hold down the shift button when you're typing that. Um, the reason why we do this is because we want it to choose to close the form when we hit that close button. Pretty easy stuff. And then form1.set visible. This one's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to set that to true. It's just basically after it's initialized all of this information in regards to the form, 
it's now packaged, it now has a spawn location, and it now has a default operation to close whenever you click the red button. We can now set it visible to the user. Go ahead and save that off. We are done with the main method for now. Jump into the practice forms class. Uh, we are going to use four different variables today. Two J buttons. This is a J button. You can access it through the Java X Swing. Uh, it's one thing to keep in mind with the Java programming language is when you're working with GUI, pretty much everything you can imagine has J tacked onto the title, and that's that. So, for instance, buttons, J buttons, text fields, which we'll be working with in a brief moment. That'll, those will be J text fields. Sliders will be J sliders. Radials will be J radial buttons. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. If you're not entirely sure what to call something, you can always just jump into the API and look it up. Uh, they're pretty easy to find. You can just search for one of these pre-existing ones that you do know about, and they're usually in the related section. So, J button plus one button, and then an exit button. This is the naming convention for buttons that I've used, or I've chosen to adopt. It'll just be the title of the button, so this one's going to be titled plus one, and then you're going to add button to the name. Makes it so that you can just title it whatever you need, and there's usually no, no instances of overlapping. Static J text field. Output TF. TF stands for text field. This is the naming convention that I use for this, the name, and then TF slapped onto the end. And then lastly, we have a string display equals quotes. The display will be what is shown inside the text field when you initialize the program. Now with all our variables declared, please keep in mind these are global variables and they have not been initialized with any form of value, so we will need to jump into a constructor, which is something that I had briefly mentioned last tutorial but never really went over. It will be public practice forms parentheses, and then your braces. So you're just naming it the exact same thing as the class with just a public attachment, nothing else. The computer will know that this combination right here is the constructor, and it will look for this to uh, build all of the variables and such the way you want them to be built, which is why we need to use it in uh, JFrames and uh, GUI form production is because we need to initialize the form and format it before we display it to the user. And we don't want the computer to just assume that these are all initialized to zero, or nil, or null even, because um, then nothing will be displayed. So we're going to start by creating a J panel. A J frame is the root. It's basically just the, um, the framing with the close button on it. The J panel is the actual content inside of it, like this entire uh, compiler, all that you can see right here. So J panel equals, or JP equals new J panel. And then inside the J panel, we set a layout and then add our buttons, uh, or add our, any of our little attachments that we have selected. For this instance, we have two buttons in a text field. So JP dot set layout. Now there's two different kinds of layouts that I'm aware of. There is the grid layout and the flow layout. Um, the grid layout is for a specifically designated size of form. You can set a number of grid spaces and it will lay out the, um, the items according to whichever one you spawn in first and you can custom set the uh, the spawn locations if you like but we're not going to get into that today we just want it to throw them in the way it decides to throw them in so we're going to do a new grid layout 2 comma 2 then jp dot add so this is the one thing you want to be conscious about when you're adding items to the form um, with flow layout even where it just automatically adjusts the size of the form to the number of items you have in there and the, not the amount of space they take up or grid layout where you give it a finite amount of space and tell it to format it however it needs to format 
um, you need to be conscious of which one you're adding in first because it will literally add in or go down the line it'll set the layout and then it'll add output dot output tf and then it'll add the buttons so or you could put the buttons in first and it'll add the buttons in and then the text form or the text field so that's something to keep in mind just be conscious about which one you're adding in first because that could cause some formatting issues to you with how you wanted the form to be formatted and then we're going to give this 20 slots for characters basically if you have a name over 20 characters long you probably couldn't enter it in this text field or rather you, I know you couldn't jp.add plus oops no caps plus one button equals new j button um, we got to give this a text, so this is going to be plus one, open quotes, close quotes, close both sets of parentheses, and then we'll close out the entire statement. And then last but not least, we have JP add exit button equals new J button. Okay, so. Basically what we've done here is we set up a grid layout. It is, um, we, here let me just do an example here. We've got brackets. So this would be 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2. And it's going to fill them out properly just depending on how we've plugged them in. So this is going to be, whoopsies. This form right here is going to be output tf. This one right here is going to be uh, plus one button. And this one right here is going to be exit button. Which is the way I want it to be set up for now. We can go and change that a little bit later. Say if you want exit button in 2.2 and plus one button in 2.1 and then have one to open we can cover that at a later date so the last thing we need to do or the last two things we need to do rather is just type output tf dot set horizontal alignment j text field left so that's going to format the text inside of the text field to be aligned to the left if I'm not mistaken add jp this is going to add the entire j panel to the j frame to complete the form and that will be what the form practice packages up so this should be a complete program let's just run it once oh yeah it doesn't like this let's just compile it perfect you need to be sure that you hit the run button on whatever f uh, class has the main method Otherwise, I'll even do it here once. It'll give you a static error saying this class does not have a static void main method. So we need to be running form practice. It'll reset the interactions, and it'll pull this up here. So we can enter text inside the text field, and we have two buttons that we can click. They don't do anything yet. That is for next tutorial. So again, just take a moment to take a glance at all of this stuff. We have creating an instance... Uh, an instance of the class practice forms I'm going to call it form 1 because you can have multiple forms inside of a uh, project and you can give them more finite names so like uh, we can call this incrementer and then we can just copy or find and replace so find form 1 replace with incrementer there we go and then that would allow us to compile it still and be safe. You can give it more a finite name, and then we're going to package the um, package everything inside the form, which should end with adding the J panel to the J frame. I'm going to set the spawn location. We're going to set a exit on close command for the close button up at the top right corner, and then we're going to set the form visible to the user. Inside here, we went over J buttons and J buttons. 
which you initialize normally, just a J button with a name, and then in here you say new J button, and then give it some text to fit on the actual button itself, and then J text fields you initialize, and then you give it a number of spaces for people to type in. Anyways, that should be it for this today's tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, have a great day.